That is all about missions. We have to let our light shine. Whatever we do, wherever we go, it is our responsibility to let Christ be working within our life to share about Jesus Christ. You know, the idea of missions, to be abandoned for Christ with no restraint, to give your life, to give the purpose of your life over to God. And, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, the idea of a missionary going to Morocco or going to China or going to Africa, the whole mindset was you go over, you, you start a church, and you're only successful if you can go start a church and your church is running 50 or 60 or 70 people, and you would be a successful missionary. The paradigm has shifted in the mindset of missions. We do not necessarily need to go into every country and start a church to be successful. The mindset of missions has to be we have to get people that have abandoned their life unto the calling of God, unto the calling of God and say, I will do whatever I can do. I need you to turn to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is going to be the launching pad into what is the strategy that Glenville needs to have in order to reach a lost and dying world? What is the strategy? When we look in Wichita, Kansas, can we make an impact upon the world? If we can make an impact upon the world, we have to have a strategy, a desire to change the direction of our life in order to be a witness around the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. We only get the power of the Holy Spirit when we give our lives to Jesus Christ. Once we've given our life to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and takes residence within our life. And once we have given the residence within Christ within our life, then the power comes within us. The Bible says, it doesn't say you may be a witness. You can be a witness. The Bible says you will be a witness. Positive or negative, you are going to be a witness for the cause of Christ. And if we want to be a positive witness for the cause of Christ, we have to on purpose, on point, decide if I'm going to be a follower of Christ, I'm going to be a positive influence for the cause of Christ. I can be a witness in Judea, in Samaria, into the uttermost parts of the earth. It could be I can be a witness in Wichita, Kansas. I can be a witness in the state of Kansas, in the United States, or I can even be a witness for Christ globally. But I have to be a witness. And the only way that we can be a witness is if we on purpose make that decision and be led by Christ. Acts chapter 1 Verse 8 is, we will be a witness. We must be a positive witness. You know, I was thinking about missions. And um, when I was going to Baptist Bible College, one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to be a missionary. And I thought God was going to allow me to be a missionary. But God had a different plan within my life. And I never had the privilege of being a missionary. So God allowed me to do something with missions without being a missionary. He gave me the ability to pastor church, to raise money, for our missionaries. So still, I'm part of missions. My job is just give you to get the money so they can go on the field. But every once in a while, I go on the mission field. I, I'm going to tell you the very first experience on the mission field. I was a youth pastor in Texas, and we took a group down to Santiago, Mexico. And our counselors that were going to go with us, named David and Robin Dorn, they couldn't leave when the kids left, so they were going to fly into Monterey, Mexico, and they landed at 1 o'clock in the morning. Now, you know what? To leave at 1 o'clock in the morning, Monterey, Mexico, is scary enough. But to be a guy that doesn't speak English, leaving Monterey, Mexico in the middle of the night is really scary, especially when you get pulled over by the Mexican police. Thinking that you're driving a drug van thinking that when they pull you out of the van, they do not have little pistols. They have AK-47s jacked at your head. And you know what I did. I was scared to death, thinking I was, I, I thought I was going to go into the Mexican penitentiary for the rest of my life, never to be seen again. That was my fears. 
So they searched the van. They didn't find anything. So they told me I could leave. And so we pulled off and we drove over to the, moder- to the airport. I got into there and talked to the doors. I said, you're not going to believe the scariest thing of my life just took place. I had an AK-47 pointed at my head and I thought I was going to die. That was when all the things that took place on that mission trip. All the kids that, that gave their life to Christ and all the ministry that we came back. When I got back to the church, you know what I talked to? I talked about an AK-47 being pointed in my head. I could really get excited about getting a lot of people going to missions. Just a few years ago, John Bacon, one of our deacons at our church and I, had the privilege of going to Tanzania. Went to Tanzania, and we went to, with Mitch and Beth Calmees. And we were doing some manna feeding centers, taking care of kids. But somehow we had an opportunity to go out into a village. I mean, this village was dirt poor, one vehicle in the entire village. And they heard a bunch of Americans were coming out to the village. So they called a tribal meeting. So they put on their dress garb. They had all the purples and the yellows. and They were flashing. They did a dance for us. They did a parade. And we were sitting around and we were just watching this tribal village doing a meeting for this American group. And they were doing some dancing, let me tell you. And I even busted a couple moves, didn't I, John? Would you call, would you call that a busting a move? <laughs> I was, I was busting it. I was doing a good job. Anyway, in my eyes, I was good. And you know, they, they were laughing at me, you know, here, trying to do it. Anyway, but here's the neat thing. No. Al. Anyway, here's the deal. <laughs> okay. Hey, I'm trying to get my train of thought back here, okay? Back off a little bit. Anyway, we all have these, uh, the tribal people around here, we're sitting around a table, and the tribal leader comes up and he says a couple things, and he starts talking. And he says, we need a well. We need a well. If there's anything you, the pastors of America, could give this tribe, it's not money, it's a well. So we got back to the States and we gave money for that will. We gave like five or six hundred bucks and the other pastors gave a bunch of money. I think, I think it was five thousand dollars for a shallow well that we gave money. So you know what the neat thing about that is once we dug the well, do you know who has the biggest influence in that tribe today? Mitch Calmees. Why? It's because he was the missionary that took a group of pastors to the tribe, dug the well, so whenever Mitch comes into town, he has free access to share the gospel with that entire tribe. You know, it's a little bit of money. But what the access is, the access is you have influence within their life. That is what it talks about, being a witness. What is missions? It is just simply being a witness. Now when we talk about martyrship, we talk about in the Islam world, we talk about he is being a martyr. That means he's going to die for his faith. He's going to be, a, be somebody that will, will totally abandon his life and he will die for whatever he thinks is right, whether you die as an Islam or you have a faith of Christianity and you die for your faith, you're a martyr. But I truly believe what a true martyr could be for us today is somebody that dies to himself for Christ. A true missionary is somebody that has, has a martyr to mindset. That says, you know what, I know what my agenda is, I know what I want to do, but I want to do what Christ wants me to do, so I'm going to die to myself on a daily basis, and I'm going to pick up the call of Christ, and I am going to be a martyr to self, so I can be who God wants me to be. And if we are a martyr, we have said, it's not my agenda, it's not my desire, it's what does Christ want within me. And I love this next point. It says, our job is not to convert the world. Our job is to communicate to the world. Success of a missionary is not the size of his church. The success of a missionary is the ability to communicate the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our job is to share our faith. The Bible never tells me one time it's my job to convert you to Jesus Christ. The Bible tells me my job is to communicate the love and the forgiveness of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit draws every person to the saving knowledge of Christ. 
you may be a witness. You may be a positive witness. You may have led many people to the Lord. But you know what? You also could be that negative witness. And you can turn people away from Christ just because we try to be sometimes overbearing in our faith instead of loving and caring in our faith. So how do we do that? We need to do that by the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit. If we do this in the power of the Holy Spirit, things do, do great things within our life. In Luke chapter 12, verse 12, it says, Jesus says, do not worry about what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. In the midst of your witness, in the midst of you going out and to communicate, when we know that we have the power of the Holy Spirit that came upon us the moment that we gave our life to Christ, we can be a witness in our jobs, in our school, in our homes. We may say, I really don't necessarily know what to say or how to say things. Here's the, here's the greatest idea. If you can get this in the mindset. Before you talk to them about God, write this down. Talk to God about them. If we talk to God, say, you know what, Lord, give me this opportunity. Allow me the ability to move within my life, to share my faith, to be a witness to somebody. God, give to me the words that I need to have. And here's exactly what God does. He makes a divine appointment. And that divine appointment is God is preparing his life. God is preparing your life. And he is bringing your life at a conclusion. And when he brings your life at that time, conclusion that impact God's doing work you're doing work God's blending them together the Holy Spirit does the impact and your witness becomes effective because you're following after God and he is following after God and you come together that is a witness our job is not to convert our job is to convey is to communicate and when we do that God does great things and then where we have to understand, we have to think globally to the ends of the earth. You know, when you think globally, we have to go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. When you go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it talks about two different mindsets of the world. One is the world, and the other is the nations, or the ethnic groups within the nations. Our job is to go into all the world. And you know, the gospel has been, has been brought out in all of the world. But the gospel has not been brought out in all the ethnic groups within the world. And that is the job of the church. The job of the church is to take the gospel into all of the world. Not just all of the countries. But getting into all the, the subculture groups that we don't even necessarily understand the language. But if we can do that, that is what God has called us to do. Now, this verse is very unique. Because listen to this verse. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says... And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world. That's the whole world. As a testimony to all nations, which is also the ethnic groups. And then the end will come. And then the end will come. We have a job to do. We cannot just be satisfied with preaching the gospel in Wichita, Kansas. We have a job. We have a mandate by God. The Great Commission is to go into all the world, communicating the love and the forgiveness of Christ. Because we do not want the blood of a world. We don't want the blood of an ethnic group on our hands because we are so self-absorbed with our little world, with our little piece of the pie, that we say, you know what? Somebody else can do that. If we believe the mandate of God, if we believe the truth of the Word of God, we will have to take the mandate of God and put it to our life and say, how can I do this? How can I change the world? How can I change Wichita? How can I change Glenville? Is if we have a passion and a love for the local church to do something, not to be satisfied. We spent all summer of talking about a healthy church. What does a healthy church look like? Well, healthy church, bottom line, when they quit looking at themselves, and they start seeing people that are hungry for something that they have. Or they're looking at people that are struggling. And we're not looking within these four walls and saying, we have it. We're looking at people that are struggling and saying, you know what, we're a bunch of goofballs too. We have issues within our life. We're not perfect, but you know what? We have the answer, and the answer is Jesus Christ. 
When we go out of these doors and we act and we think that we have it all together, and somebody comes into our church and they see a bunch of pious Christians, what? The, that's not for me. But when you can say, you know what? I was just like you. And Jesus Christ radically transformed my life. And he offered to me the greatest gift that I've ever received, and that's forgiveness of my sins and a transformation of my life. That is when we become witnesses because the evidence of our transformation is evident within other people's lives. Not my discipleship, not what I know, how much I can preach and what I can communicate. It's really, can I actually get into somebody's life and to love them and to help them? So the who of missions is God has given it to the local church. He has given the job of the Great Commission to you and I. Because the local church, the purpose of the Word of God is to send missionaries to every subgroup so they can share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, in our society today, now I've been to a lot of third world countries, and you know what the third world country, the poorest in the third world country still has what? A cell phone. They do. I mean, iPhone 5s and iPhone 4s are all over every, every third world country. You can get a knockoff for, for 50 bucks. And you can get that plan, and you're, you're sitting there, there on a dirt road with wires going over your head, and there's no food to drink, and there's no floor in their house, but yet they have their little iPhone, and they're communicating to the world. Because, you know what? The vehicle of the Word of God and the message of Jesus Christ doesn't have to be what we've always done. What we have to do is we have to start looking at ways to share the gospel in a unique, most powerful way to get the gospel of Jesus Christ, not necessarily through the mouth of a church, but to the hands of the people that are needing it the most. So how do we do that? What is the strategy? The strategy has to be a team approach of missions. And I just wanted to lay four things down at you real quick. And I think these things are very important. And the first one is prayer. We developed from this missions booklet is the missionaries that Glenville supports. We support approximately 70 different missionaries from $100 to $500. It depends on who it is and, and how many times they've been back to the church, whether there are new missionaries or been with us for some time. But in this book is a little bio of all of our missionaries. How we can be successful. We think money is the way to solve the problem. You know how, the, how to solve a problem spiritually? is prayer. These missionaries need our resources in order to stay on the field. But to be successful on the field, they need a group of people that will say, you know what, I'll pray for you. I'm going to read your bio on a daily basis. And I, I'm going to understand who you are and where you came from and the work that you have. And I want to lay my life in prayer before you. So I'm going to ask us at the end of our service, each family come down and take a book from the Glenville Family Directory and say, I promise on a weekly basis, I'm going to lift up a missionary. And on the next week, I'm going to turn around to another missionary. And not only am I going to pray for them, I'm going to get to know missionaries. You know, you know who missionaries are? They're people that were sitting in the chairs. Maybe they were a teenager. Maybe they were an adult. And a missionary came up, or a pastor communicated, or maybe they were at a camp, and the speaker communicated about their call. And the Holy Spirit of God said something to them, said, you can do that. I want you to do that. And many times we've had that call. Many times we have felt that urge from the Holy Spirit. And we say, <laughs> you get somebody else. Not me. I don't want that. And then sometimes a few missionaries say, I'll try. I don't know, I don't know how good it'll be, but I am willing to do whatever I can do. So we look at a missionary that stands up here that says, I'm going to sell everything and I'm going to go to China or I'm going to go to Mongolia or I'm going to go to Cambodia. All they are is people like you that just heard a tugging of their heart and they say, I'll try it. And after they got up and they started moving through life, they found out that God's hand is upon their life. They found out that they could do the great things for God, not because of them, because God is with them. And they can do that because they're normal people that have a special calling upon their life. They're nobody special. They're nobody different. They're just you following after Christ. 
Many of us have been called. Many of us have even answered that call. But many of us have failed in that call. So what we do with what God has called us to do, God does not love us because we don't answer the call. God changes the direction of our life and he gives us the opportunity to do greater and more things. But the first thing that we must do is we must pray because our missionaries are just like you and they're just like me. They have their own insecurities. They have their own failures. They have their own things that they deal with. They have abandoned what they want to accept God's call into the future. I don't know how many times uh, we've seen missionaries at the airport getting ready to fly out. Mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, aunts, uncles, nephews, and nieces sitting at the airport. And this young couple, right out of college, 25, 26, 27 years of age, gets on a plane, flies to a different country. Oh, the tears of the parents and the grandparents. How could they do this? But the calmness of the missionary. Oh, they're going to be sad because, you know, they're going to have Christmas and Thanksgiving without mom and without dad. They're going to see the stuff happen. Grandpa's going to die. Grandma's going to die, and we're not going to be able to come back to the funeral. But they have an overall calmness. But they believe what they're calling in life is, is to do one thing, to share Jesus. We have a hard time going across the street to even mention his name. And they will sacrifice to go around the world and to leave it all behind. That's the difference between convenience and abandonment. We take the life of ease. They take the life of abandonment. They abandon the comfortable for the needy. So what do we do? We pray for them. And the second thing that we need to do is we need to give money so others can go. That's what missions is all about. You know, 15 years ago, the church would give about thirty to $35,000 a year to missions. And that's why we had all our missionaries. And we would give a little bit of money for each missions. And, and we started... A, a, a strong effort a few years ago is it's not a, the monies that we give to missions goes to our missionaries goes to support them to love them to get them on the field when there's a major crisis on the field they can call in and we can send them a thousand bucks or five thousand bucks or whatever the issue is our monies go to them but if our churches now get a load of this if our churches stagnate and decline what happens to the money if there's no people, there's no money. Ask, ask my, my CPA that. They'll tell you that. If the people quit coming, the money goes down. The missionaries are on the field. I have to make a call. Sorry, the money's not here. Well, what, what are you going to be able to do? You know, it's going to take a couple months. I'll get kicked, kicked back up, and we'll make it happen. So the idea of the churches, if 80% of our local churches in the United States of America today are stagnated and declining. That means the resources are stagnated or declining. They're not moving up. Only 20% of our churches are even on a moving scale going forward. If 80% are stagnated and declining, what do you think our missionaries are doing? Oh yeah, we're going to have a great future. You know what they're doing? They're scared to death that they have abandoned their life to answering a call to do what God wants them to do, but yet, if I can say this with all sincerity, we, the comfortable, that are called to share the gospel around the world but are too lazy to go, we say, you know what? I need that Diet Coke every morning at 7 o'clock before I go teach. I need it. But if you didn't, I could give an extra 10 bucks. You know, is it that simple? Well, it is that simple. If 600 people gave up their Diet Coke and gave an extra 10 bucks, what could we do? We're asking our missionaries to sacrifice to go around the world. <laughs> what are we sacrificing? Not 
What are we sacrificing for the cause of Christ? Do we go to church? Or are we committed to Christ? No, it is the Great Commission. If the Bible says, go, does that mean you only go as a missionary if you've been called by God? But if the Bible is, the way I read the Bible, is applicable to all of us, go means I'm going to help if I can't. I'm going to serve wherever I can serve. I'm going to do whatever I can do. We need to give money to help others go and do what they need to do. And then sometimes we just need to give time to organize and to help and strategize. Be on a, be on a missions team at a church. Vo volunteer at an area that does mission work. Just get out of our comfort zone. Go out to the, to the Lord's diner. Go serve someplace. Go look at a place where we get out of our comfort zone. If I'm not going to go around the world, at least let me go across the street. Let me serve. Let me give something of myself to others so it's not always about me. And then I, I love this about some of the people in our church. Just open their homes. Just open their homes. We have some foreign exchange students come in through the church, and we have missionaries coming in. And people say, hey, I, I would love to have a missionary. Uh, can, I, can I keep the missionary next week? Or can I have the missionary next year? Whatever the case is, when a missionary drives through, you know, you know as a missionary is on a budget, you know, hotels 75 to 100 bucks. You know, if they have to travel seven days to get to their next appointment, what are we going to do? That's where the churches have to come in, either help them, support them, get them a hotel, or if somebody says, you know what, if somebody comes through, I'd be glad to help. We have the list. We can make the phone call, and they can stay at your home. Not only do they get to stay with you, you get to have impact within their life. And you know what? When that missionary sits around that coffee table, and they start talking about their issues of life, and they talk about their problems that they're going on, they're talking about the stories of, of transformation and the evangelism. What happens? It turns your heart. So when you turn this book and you see that missionary, you're going to not only hear the story, you're going to feel his story. And when you feel his story, you're going to pray for that missionary. That's connection. That's so important. So open your homes just to let the missionaries know that it's important that Glenville, the Bible Belt, the Christianity is there to support them. They're on the field. They need to know that people love them. And then the last one is simply go. Simply go. The workforce in the mission endeavor is depleting. The age of our missionary is skyrocketing. And if the ages of our missionaries are skyrocketing overall, sooner or later, in the next 15 to 20 years, our missionary endeavor is going to be at a place where the younger generation will not be able to be ministered to because our older generation is our missionaries. What we have to do in the mission endeavor is the exact same endeavor we have to do within our church. And we've been transforming this, transitioning this over the last four months. If we only cater to a demographic of a church, the younger demographic will do what? I'm not going to go there. But if we can minister to the younger demographic and minister to the older demographic at the same time, who gets glorified? Jesus. The younger get saved, the older mature. They get to see Christ within their life. They get to see a younger generation take over the leadership of the church. And that is how the ebb and flow of ministry works. And it's the exact same thing of missions. If we do not get a younger generation coming through junior high and high school and college to say, you know what? I could be a missionary. And then we can get behind them and support them and love them and help them go through the Bible college and go to missions. That is what we need in order for the missions endeavor of our church to continue to grow, is to go. Through our students, through our adults, the simple word of the Great Commission is go. Go into all of the world. Not just stay home. But go. And if we can't go, we need to send. And how do we send? Is by bringing people in that we can have a connection with. Bringing Jeremy and Carissa in here just to get to know them. Pray with them. Love them. Pray for them on a weekly basis. When a missionary comes through town, they're not just a guest speaker. They're missionaries that have banded their life to do God's call. 
That's pretty wow to me. I'm pretty impressed when somebody would do that. So all we're asking for you today, understand the strategy. The strategy is, number one, let's pray. Let's pray for those that are sacrificing. Let us look at ways that we can minister to others. If we can open up our doors, let's open up our doors. If we can give sacrificially, let us give. But let's go. Let's get up and do something. More important than anything else, let's pray. There should not be a family within our church that doesn't understand that these books are theirs so they can see a name, a see a field, and for two or three minutes a day, five minutes a week, to lift their names up in prayer so they are being lifted up and guarded by God. If you knew the oppression, the satanic attacks, the problems that take place in not only third world countries, but also in first world countries, about Satan, about people, you know that they, just like we, need to have the protection. We just need to pray that God will protect them in everything that we do, in every aspect within our life. I'm going to ask Justin, if he would, to make his way up here, and we're going to have a, a song of invitation. And our invitation is very simple today. The invitation is, we're going to come down here, and we're going to take a book. And I'd ask your family to take a book. And open up any page within the book. Any page. There's a missionary on that page. And spend two minutes in prayer for that missionary. And at the conclusion of your prayer, pray that Glenville will have a passion and a vision to have a strategy that is successful to reaching the rest of this world through our love, through our support, and through our missionaries. We need to do what God has called us to do, to go into all of the world. Would you please stand to your feet? Whether you're a member here or not, it makes absolutely no difference. This is an opportunity for you to get a hold of something that God has called a missionary to go around the world, and you have an opportunity to lift his name up to Christ for his protection and his guidance. So let's spend a few minutes in prayer about missions and about your life.